Hi there, my name is Ken Mayer and I'm going to be your instructor for this course. Now I've been in this uh, business of high tech something, as they say it that way because it's so much has uh, changed over the last 30 years, but I've been doing that since 1981. That means that I've seen a lot of different types of operating systems, from mainframe systems, from standalone systems, from the DOS uh, machines when that first became popular with our home PCs, to Windows 3.1, Windows 95, Windows 98, that uh, little millennium edition, and all of those different versions, all the way through here, of course, to now where we're working with Windows 7. At the same time, I've worked with other operating systems. Uh, I've worked with Linux systems. I've worked with uh, the Novell network system. So I have a wide variety of experience with the idea of what a network operating system is and what the client software is supposed to be doing for us. So I'm going to hopefully take all of that experience and talk about uh, the things that have changed, what's new with Windows 7, and uh, be able to uh, basically give you a bit of the uh, history of where we've been and uh, what's new, what uh, you need to be looking for as you are working with the installation and configuration of Windows 7. Now we're going to take a look at the basic Windows 7 installation options. Now I say basic because there are many ways in which you can do the uh, Windows 7 installation, but we're going to be focusing on uh, some of the uh, real basics, you know, putting in the DVD-ROM and doing a clean installation. Now we're going to talk about things like minimum hardware requirements, your options of 32-bit and 64-bit windows. We're going to take a look at uh, some of the considerations of why you might choose to do this type of installation. And I'm not saying basic means bad, it just means that you have many options. Uh, and we're going to talk about some of the types of installation errors that you could have come across and what you can do to try to troubleshoot those. So all in all, our goal is to be able to make sure that you can start with the DVD-ROM of Windows 7 and be able to get to a finished installation and have a standalone, I call it standalone because we haven't talked about networking types of connections, but to have, be able to have a standalone working version of Windows 7. Well now in our first section we're going to talk about preparing to install Windows 7. Uh, that means that we're going to kind of give you a rundown, some of the key features, uh, the additions of Windows 7, your minimum hardware requirements for the different versions, and we'll talk about some of the advantages you have if you go with the 64-bit edition over the 32-bit, and then of course uh, some options for installing Windows 7. Now this is going to be kind of uh, what appears to be a sales chapter because we're going to talk about the benefits and uh, the features and things like that about Windows 7, and it's not meant for uh, me trying to sell it to you, but really just to get you an idea of what it is we're going to try to explore as we go through on this course. Now, first of all, key features for Windows 7. Some of those are just categorized by usability. Now, usability, boy, I, I don't know where to go with that. Just thinking about the desktop and all the changes to the desktop and pinning things to the taskbar, being able to shake forms and, and uh, all these new search capabilities to create libraries that are searchable and indexed, to have these federation types of searches where I can actually have a search that goes out and looks at other shares and other locations. Great things in the world of uh, usability. As far as security goes, we see a huge change in security. We have uh, things like BitLocker to encrypt the drive and the operating system. We have the ability to utilize multi-factor authentication, and it just continues to go on from there. You have uh, Windows Defender that has uh, been, of course, much improved since Windows Vista. You have the UAC control to be able to keep uh, people from installing uh, malware and those types of things that they might not otherwise have known were being uh, installed in the background. A multi-tiered data protection through rights management, uh, app locker again, bit locker, encrypted file systems, uh, and it just goes on and on and on with all of these cool things that we can do. Uh, even including the, the improvements to the uh, Windows firewall with advanced features and the use of IPsec for direct access or for secure communications. With reliability and performance, we see that applications can run better and faster and can recover from uh, a deadlock situation. That we have better tools to be able to look at how it's working, how it's running. Uh, through scripting capabilities, we can uh, have uh, our administrators actually make uh, their own customized tools to be able to help in uh, analyzing what's wrong with an application or how to better fine-tune the, the environment. Deployment options through uh, the uh, WIM and the image distribution makes it easy to deploy hundreds and hundreds of these uh, uh, Windows 7 workstations in a simple day, or a single day I should say, to make it very simple to be able to put it together. Manageability, productivity, all of these have key features that have made big improvements in Windows 7 and, uh, and it's, it's, it really is, it's exciting. I have to say, and, and because you know, I, people who know me realize what I'm about to say is true. I was not at first the biggest fan of Windows Vista. 
In fact, you know, I used to say, oh man, I can't wait to go back to XP, like so many people said. And in reality, it was just that I wasn't ready for the changes that came to Windows uh, Vista to make my life uh, easier to run the, the environment, to be able to have more protection, to see better reliability, to see all these really cool features, all of which have been even more improved on Windows 7. Now, once I got used to it, it was fine. It was, you know, it was just a matter of maybe uh, I've been around so long, I'm one of those, uh, what's the saying, uh, an old dog trying to learn new tricks. Okay, with Windows 7, you don't see any resistance from me at all. I really like it. And by the way, don't take what I said to say, oh, Vista was horrible. I just didn't uh, go along with the change so smoothly as I should have. And uh, But I do like it now. I utilize it now. And Windows 7, I can't wait till it's released because I'm going to 7 as soon as I can. Now, one of the things that uh, has been this uh, kind of fodder for some jokes from other operating system companies are all the additions of Windows 7. And we still have, well that was with Windows Vista, we still have lots of additions with Windows 7. We have the uh, entry level edition which is the Windows 7 starter, which I think comes only in the 32-bit edition. You have the value edition, which means of course, again, we're talking about are there features that you do or don't need, and if you don't need the features like some of the high-end business focused uh, types of applications or, or options, then why do you want to pay for them? And, and so I, it, to me it's reasonable to have these different editions. We see this, by the way, in every other vendor that you go out there. If you, uh, if you go buy a Cisco router, they have multiple versions. In fact, they make uh, what I'm talking about with, with Microsoft look like a walk in the park. You know, they may have up to a hundred different versions of an operating system for the same router, depending on what you need it to do and what you want it to do, and you're paying for what you need and, and not having to go pay for all these other features that you never use. So uh, this is a very common, very normal type of thing in this environment and I like that we are going to get a, a version that does what we need and uh, we're not paying for stuff that's extra that we'll never use. So they got the home basic, they call that the value edition. They have the uh, Windows 7 Home Premium, your standard consumer edition. In Windows 7 Professional, they'll give you a business-focused edition for small to lower mid-markets. You have the Windows 7 Enterprise, which again, as it talks about, is focusing for large enterprises, which would be those that have maybe 500 workstations or more. And then, of course, if you just want everything that's under the hood in Windows 7, you get the Windows 7 Ultimate. All right, so hardware requirements. Now, depending on the version of the hardware requirements, uh, and these, by the way, you can read off of any, uh, uh, right off the box if you need to. But if you're looking at the hardware requirements, I'm just going to kind of give you a rough summary from the low end of, uh, of Windows 7 to the high end. And, and it's going to be difficult, it's going to be difficult for you to find a PC that does not come around and meet these minimum uh, requirements. In fact, you'd have to go probably to a used PC site and uh, find one uh, that's uh, years old to be able to go down so low in hardware that you can't run Windows 7. The issue you have to be careful though in what I'm trying to say as a joke is that you can't go too old anyway because you need to make sure you have updated driver support. So memory, anywhere from a minimum of half a gig to a gig minimum requirement, that doesn't mean you should stop there, certainly add more in there if you can. The CPU, uh, anywhere from the 800 megahertz to a gigahertz uh, range of uh, processing power. Uh, the graphical card to be able to support uh, uh, DirectX uh, 9, uh, SVGA, but if you go to the high end where you have the aero uh, types of needs, then you're going to have to make sure you have a graphics uh, card that can support, uh, that is listed as aero capable. Hard drive, anywhere from 20 to 40 gigabytes of storage available for uh, the installation and for use of this operating system. The um, uh, optical drive support, CD-ROMs, DVD-ROMs, all of those, of course, also available for you as well. So it's really, what I've just said sounds like, again, if, if, you, if you told me that I needed a gigabit of RAM, a gigahertz processor, a 40 gig hard drive, a DVD-ROM drive, and I said, well, that's easy. I could go and get that as scrap material and put it together very simply. So the hardware requirements are not that stringent for Windows 7. But what I did say in, in talking about this, and that is important, is that you make sure that you have drivers that can support some of this older uh, types of hardware. As an example, and, and this is a credit now to Hewlett Packard, I have an old HP 1000 uh, laser printer and I've had that thing for probably close to 10 years. 
and um, I'm running Windows Vista. I told you, I, I, I like Vista. I'm r running with Vista. And the thing doesn't have a driver, and Hewlett Packard hasn't, doesn't have a driver to make it work. I had to kind of tweak and twist and do some stuff with the XP drivers to make it work with, uh, with my Vista, but I still lost network sharing capability with that printer. And I know you're all telling me, hey, Ken, just break out the crowbar to your wallet, get a new printer. They're, uh, they're I mean, dirt cheap. And I did. I went out to a, a local uh, electronics store and I bought a brand new laser printer for 50 bucks. Uh, that out exceeds whatever I was doing with my uh, HP 1000, but that HP 1000 still runs. And it's like, I just can't give it up. So maybe it'll be in the museum somewhere. But that's the point. The older stuff, as much as I'm joking about it and saying it's easy to meet these requirements, the old stuff may not have driver support. So that's something else you want to consider when we're talking about hardware requirements. A little out of scope for this particular uh, point in which we're talking about the actual PC. But make sure your peripherals also have the drivers for Windows Vista. And remember that Windows 7 is still on the horizon. It's not officially released as I'm talking to you. Uh, but most of the drivers from Vista to 7 will still work for you just fine. But always now make sure that you have the right drivers to support whatever you're working with on the hardware. Now, you have two editions, a 64-bit edition and a 32-bit edition. You want to take advantage of the 64-bit processors and use the 64-bit edition of uh, Windows Vista. So what are you going to do? You're going to get improved performance. I mean, if you think about it, if I have a 64-bit processor and I'm just running a little 32-bit uh, operating system on there, it's the operating system that's kind of the choke point now because it has its own built-in limitations of a 32-bit um, uh, OS. So utilize the better performance and with the 64-bit option, you can have more addressable memory uh, that's available to you. Certainly better device support, much improved security. The downside, and I hate to tell you this, you're going to lose the 16-bit WOW. Now, if you're not sure what I mean by WOW, that was called the Windows on Windows. It was a virtual machine to be able to uh, basically um, have a 16-bit DOS-based operating system programs running on top of Windows. So if you've got an old DOS-based program that you just absolutely have to run, maybe some old game, you can't do it in the 64-bit um, uh, uh, processor or the 64-bit version of the operating system. So what do you do? You go to Windows Virtualization, you install some old antiquated uh, operating system and then you can run your stuff there. Also, you uh, the WIM files can only have either 32-bit or 64-bit images. You can't have both. Now, as far as the options for doing the installations, this has not changed at all from any type of installation. You can do a clean installation, which means whatever else was on that operating or on that workstation is going to be gone. You're going to install the CD, the DVD, network share. You're going to run setup. You're going to wipe out, re-image uh, basically, or, or uh, re-format um, uh, that drive and lose whatever was there before. You're going to start over clean. If you choose upgrade, which is nothing wrong with that, then you're going to place an ex or replace the existing operating system uh, with Windows 7. But that means that you're going to keep whatever other problems you may have already had. So doing an upgrade is fine as long as you know that the platform you're upgrading is running well, is running free from errors, and by doing the upgrade, you get to keep the applications, files, and settings that you already have. Now you can also do a migration, which means that if you already have a computer that's running Windows 7 and you want to move files from your old operating or source computer to the new one, they now have a migration tool that allows you to migrate the files from uh, one Windows 7 machine to another Windows 7 machine. That's not an upgrade. That's a migration from one platform to another platform, both running Windows 7. All right, so now I mentioned all of these different versions. Let me just make sure that you understand what's out there. As I said with Windows 7 Starter, you're still going to have the, the benefits of Windows 7, the, the um, types of things that make it easier for you to use. You're going to have the improvements to your Windows taskbar, uh, the pinning of, uh, of applications to the taskbar, jump lists, uh, searching, being able to join the home group, uh, it's only going to be 32-bit as an operating system, but you still have what you would expect for the, uh, for the use, the basic use of Windows 7. With the Home Basic, you're basically going to have no limit now on the number of programs you can run. You can get the thumbnail uh, preview that you wouldn't have with the starter. Uh, advanced networking support, wireless networks. That's probably where most of you are going to start if you want the cheapest version instead of 7, uh, the 7 starter. With the Home uh, 
uh, with the home premium, you're going to get the arrow, which is uh, the uh, improvements and enhancements to the way in which you can look at the things on your desktop. You're going to have the uh, multi-touch handwriting support. You'll be able to create a home group, share, uh, do shares that work across all your PCs, DVD video playback, authoring. You'll have all of the uh, Windows Media snipping tools, sticky notes, Windows Journal, uh, all of the things that uh, as a home premium edition gives you those uh, kind of features that we like to have in the multimedia realm. When we talk about professional, now we're moving into a business focus. With the professional, you're going to have all of the core business features such as being able to join a domain, group policies, uh, the data protection with your uh, network backup, your encrypted file systems, to be able to uh, print to the correct printer at home or at work with, a, with what they call location-aware printing, and uh, with your uh, remote desktop connectivity and offline folders. When you move from professional and you're still in the enterprise environment but moving to the large enterprise with Windows 7 Enterprise, then you're going to see uh, additions or, or add-ons like BitLocker, which are going to be able to protect your internal and external hard drives, uh, app locker to make sure you can't install programs that you shouldn't have uh, access to. The remote connectivity, a thing we call direct access. This um, branch office type of, uh, of ability to connect to the home office and minimize the utilization of your WAN link by using what they call branch cache. Well, some of these things we'll, we're certainly going to be talking about as well as we go through here. But I'm just trying to make sure that you understand you've got a lot of different versions. And as you can tell from what I'm saying, as you go in uh, to the uh, upper ends of these Windows 7s, you're just adding on capabilities that a home user might not need. And so that's why I think it's important to know that you have those different versions and that uh, you basically, as I've said already, can just pay for what you need and don't have to buy a, a very expensive product and have half of the features never used, but you still had to pay for them.